Hello and welcome to Dunk's Dungeon. I've just finished a very enjoyable Waterdeep Dragon Heist campaign and I want to share with you some of the ways I enhance the experience for my players. The first thing I noticed when running this adventure is that wizards ignored the best Waterdeep location for a criminal underground adventure that ties in perfectly with all four of the suggested villains. Skullport, the Port of Shadow. So today I'm going to share with you how you can add Skullport to your Waterhaven adventures, making them grittier and delving deeper into the underground culture and lore of the most famous city in the Forgotten Realms. Wizards of the Coast has access to the entire history of published material from the late great TSR, yet chose to republish one of the greatest dens of scum and villainy, Skullport, as an often overlooked appendix to a module that very few people play, Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Waterdeep Dragon Heist is a fairly well-constructed beginner's campaign pitting the party against the underworld of the largest city in the Forgotten Realms, yet fails to mention the home of corruption and skullduggery within Waterdeep. To me, that is a travesty bordering on criminal negligence. So today, I'm going to go through the lore of Skullport to show you the best bits to incorporate into your Waterdeep adventures, especially Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Skullport started as a set of nondescript buildings scribbled on the southern edge of map of level 3 in the undermounted box set of the 1990s, and whose lore was expanded on in Dragon Magazine 172 by Ed Greenwood and Stephen Shen, and was brought to life fully in the 1999 publication Skullport by Joseph C. Wolfe. Wizards has given it a cursory nod as an appendix in Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage, dedicating a whole seven pages to the location but not connecting it in any meaningful way to either of their currently published Waterdeep adventures. Let's fix that here today, as Skullport is one of the most interesting locations with a rich set of lore that is almost bottomless font of adventure hooks and side quests. The lore of Skullport was established in the 1990s, starting as an ancient abandoned dwarven mining community along an underground river. After the mine ran dry, the location was commandeered as a netheral outpost during the height of the Netherese Empire. After the calamity of the fall of Netheril, the outpost was abandoned and haunted by the skulls of 13 powerful Netherese mages, trapped by the magical chaos of that time to within the confines of the cavern containing Skullport. These skulls have unknown motivations and desires and have historically been the true power within Skullport. But recently, they've been losing their grip on reality and slowly going insane. As the minds and motivations of the Skulls become more chaotic, enterprising refugees moved into the cavern using the protection of the Skulls to establish a trading outpost that connected the piracy of the Sword Coast to the Desians of the Underdark within spitting distance of the most powerful city on Toril. Wizards of the Coast in the 5th edition world has turned the Skulls from a somewhat insane godlike immortal level 36 magic user as a group to a pathetic collection of 13 senile flame skulls with no true influence over the machinations of the residents of Skullport, making it very challenging to incorporate these unique NPCs into a campaign in any meaningful way. Skullport also has become a shell of its former glory, with only a few of the diverse locations described in the second edition book still around in the fifth edition lore, and many areas abandoned and the slave trade conveniently abandoned. The skulls of Skullport were once so powerful, even Halister Blackcloak refused to enter Skullport and forbid his apprentices from approaching, knowing the true danger the skulls pose to wielders of powerful magic. The skulls policed Skullport with one overriding rule, that the flow of commerce, all commerce, must not be impinged. The skulls repeated a saying, this be a safe haven to all traders and customers. Keep your weapons and your uncivil tongue sheathed, lest you find the skull of death smiling on your face. How I like to roleplay the skulls in my adventures is somewhere in between these two extreme interpretations. The skulls are a chaotic force that keeps the town of Skullport from ever being too efficient and as a check against any one entity taking too much control over the underworld of Waterdeep. They are insane, but can be somewhat predictable by those smart enough to observe the skulls for an extended period of time. I see the most influential entities in Skullport as those who understand and can use the skulls to eliminate their opposition or protect their interests. Take a couple of examples. 
a street urchin thief who has realized that the sound of breaking glass enrages the skulls and uses this knowledge to create distractions or conflicts. The gang leader, who understands the pattern of movement of the skulls so they know the locations and times where crime will not summon the skulls. A party without this knowledge will be at a severe disadvantage against the locals, who might know something as simple as wearing purple is a death sentence if seen by a particular skull. My biggest gripe about Dragon Heist was why didn't Wizards of the Coast incorporate this location in their underworld adventure? It's either laziness, negligence, or a desire in keeping the adventure PG-13. Skullport is only mentioned once as an access point for Xanthar's lair, but Skullport's original lore is predominantly a slave trading post, a wretched hive of scum and villainy where those from the surface are kidnapped and sold to the evil races of the Undark, and this could be triggering for many players. Lawful stupid characters would not last very long in such a place so maybe it was too complicated to incorporate into an inclusive beginner adventure. Either way, I'm here to help fix this. Here are my ideas on how to incorporate Skullport into the Waterdeep Dragon Heist. There will be minor spoilers to follow. First off, after the acquisition of the tavern, the party needs to establish a presence in Waterdeep and raise some funds for maintenance and repairs. A good aligned party might be sent on a bounty hunting mission into Skullport, whereas a shady party might be given a couple of jobs to do starting or ending in the port. The chase for the Stone of Gorlor could run through parts of Skullport, as it's the most likely place for those on the run would hide from the law, or those trying to return the stone to Xanthar, and this great setting of stacked houses, narrow alleyways, rope bridges, and a three-dimensional battlefield make it a very exciting location for extended chase. I extended the acquisitions of the Vault Keys part of the adventure within my campaign, with one of the keys being a Beholder's Eye Stalk. To acquire this, I had Xanthar dream up a rival Beholder who escaped into Skullport and was causing havoc. Xanthar was hiring mercenaries to hunt down and kill this would-be usurper. The party had a fun time infiltrating Skullport, dodging insane skulls and Xanthar agents to take down this weakened Beholder and acquire the key. For those DMs considering running Dragon Heist, one of the main considerations is the choice of four main villains, all of which should be connected to Skullport in some way. Let's run through each of them individually. Number one, Xanthar. Wizards has designated Xanthar as the current rule of Skullport in the Mad Mage Appendix, so it would have numerous hideouts, warehouses, and slave pens scattered across Skullport and controls Skull Island in the middle of the river Sargalf completely. One access point to Xanthar's lair is from Skullport, and if Xanthar is the main villain, the port should be a very interesting but very dangerous place for the party to investigate. Number two, the Xantarum. As an unscrupulous mercantile entity, it would only be expected that they would want to wrestle control of the Port of Shadow from Xanthar's guild and may employ the party to help do so. With Manchu starting a war with Xanthar, much of this conflict could take place in Skullport away from the meddling actions of the Lords or City Watch. Number three, Regendeth. Why would a drow merchant risen from the Underdark looking for power in the City of Splendors not base some of their operations in the Port of Shadow? Jaraxel's main lair is a traveling seafare, so it fits nicely that it would have agents in Skullport to establish connections for his nefarious trade. Skullport connects Waterdeep to the Underdark, and it's the perfect location for Bregandeath to smuggle in new drow agents and resources from Jaraxel's extensive Underdark networks. Number four, the Castellantas. These villains would have the least connection to Skullport, However, the port is a great location for the secret temple to Asmodeus, and such an evil cult would have many connections to this location, or would flee here if discovered to avoid the justice of the lords. So I'd just like to reiterate, if you're going to design an adventure exploring the seedy underbelly of a bustling city, adding Skullport to your adventure is a no-brainer. I highly recommend getting a copy of the 1999 publication from the DMs Guild if you don't already own Dungeon of the Mad Mage. It goes into far more detail about the different factions interacting within the Port of Shadow and has more detailed locations and NPCs than the recent reimagining. 
There are also quite a few third-party adventures that are set in Skullport for cheap on DM's Guild, and I'll put a link in the description of this video so you can go get some. I'd just like to finish off this video by giving a quick shout out to the best bits of Skullport I like to steal from my adventures. Mimic Rope Bridges. Imagine a pet mimic that imitates a rope bridge in one of the upper levels of Skullport. Locals either know to offer a small snack of food to cross, or are known to the mimic who leaves them be. But woe to any outsider who tries to use the inconspicuous bridge. Maybe a perception check to notice the gaggle of street urchins looking on in glee at the anticipated carnage. A hag making a living as a zombie salesman. Heading into the Dungeon of the Mad Mage or the Underdark and need some trap triggers? All in Stillwater will set you up with a couple of cannon fodder for a price. Want a discount? Bring your own body, no questions asked. Using lingering injuries in your campaign or have some incurable diseases or poisons? Try Leech's Quick Cures, an alternative to divine healing. Leech only uses proven natural based cures to fix what ails you. Got diseased by spending too much time in the sewers? Take this concoction and be cured. However, you might have a few days of violent wrenching and nausea. It's just a sign that it's working. Hide Horrors. Want your own hook horror as a pet? Have a special creature in mind to complete your perfect edgelord ensemble? Outsource the hunt up to your professionals for most of your life savings. Hide Horrors will search the Underdark for your perfect sidekick. Training of monsters not included. Cage extra. Help definitely wanted. Rumormonger. Why murder your rivals when you can have them cancelled? For a fee, a network of beggars and urchins can spread whatever rumour you want. Within hours, the rumour is spread across Skullport and for a premium price through Waterdeep itself. Sit back and watch the reputation of your enemies crumble as the circling hyenas finish off your rivals for you. So hopefully I have resurrected Skullport in your mind as an essential location for any Waterhaven adventure that interacts with the underbelly of the city. In my next video, I'll go over some of the third party side quests and adventures I incorporated into Waterdeep Dragon Heist to expand the adventure for my players. If this interests you, then I'll see you in the next video. And as always, go with my blessing to roll well and roll often. The stench of the refuse filled streets assaults your nostrils. You are lost within the warren of narrow alleyways of towering terraced shanties built from what look like shipwrecks scavenged from ignorant captains who misjudge the challenge of doing business in the port of shadows. The infamous skulls you have been warned about are nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, a subtle brush of a hand across your belt sends rushes of adrenaline through your tense body. A small figure dashes through the legs of the bustling crowd with their ill-gotten prize. You give chase, frantically pushing aside strangers in pursuit of the thief. Nobody helps. Some even try to impede your progress as you gain on the young thief who ducks down a narrow breezeway between two shacks. You burst around the corner to see the scoundrel, a young half-elf boy holding your coin purse in one hand and an empty potion bottle in the other. Floating 10 feet above the urchin, you see one of the dreaded skulls of Skullport facing away from you. With a wink and a grin, the urchin drops the empty potion bottle and ducks into an impossibly small crevice in the wall. The sound of breaking glass pierces the air as the skull quickly spins around and screams, Vandals! Punishment is required! Submit or die! What would you like to do?